Would you turn your Bibles, if you will, to the book of, and I'm going to conclude this today. I'm going to, I've been trying to conclude. Y'all, y'all pray for this pastor because for the past three weeks, this is the third week, I've been trying to conclude this text and these people, not y'all, these people. Mo, they get out of control that I be trying to finish and little girl, they just act up. I don't even know why I'm saying this because y'all gonna do it again. Just Isaiah chapter number 61 and I'm going to come get this, Patrick. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to finish this today because when I get back from vacation, I got a word in my belly. Uh, I want y'all to hear it and I want the devil to hear it. I am sick and tired of Satan wreaking havoc in the life of God's people. Look at somebody real quick and tell them enough is enough. Isaiah chapter number 61, I'm only going to teach today or preach today from verse number 3, but I'm going to read 1 through, through 2 for uh, just to, for not confirmation, but give some sense of why, uh, what led me to verse number 3. The Spirit of the Lord Jesus said, this is uh, the text of the, uh, what the Lord spoke in the synagogue when he opened the scroll for the first time and read to those who were in the house of God. He said, the spirit of God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and all of this I've dealt with. So uh, you can get that. And the opening of prisons to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Tell somebody and tell them this is the year. This is the year. This is the year. At the beginning of the year, we declared and decreed that this would be an epic year for us. And God has indeed been honoring that prophetic utterance. Say epic. Say epic. Would you do something for me and prophetically encourage two people and tell them this is going to be an epic year for you? Mm. I, I hope I, I, I just absolutely hope you are standing by a believer and not an infidel somebody that don't believe in the prophetic utterances of our God so just in case you are standing by somebody that don't believe that God can do what he said tell somebody like this it is, is going to be an epic year for me for me and my house No, 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 no. I, I need us to put that in the atmosphere. Say me and my house. That means my children. That means my children's children. Matter of fact, it's going to be so epic that not only is it going to impact me, it's going to impact everybody that's connected to me. Woo, God have mercy. Y'all go make me preach up in here. I dare you to shake a hand real quick like you're about to shake it off and say it's going to be an epic year for me and my house. You need to touch me. You need to rub against me. My God, you need to be my friend because what God is about to do in my life it's going to bless me and everything that's connected to me. I just felt something in the spirit. I just felt something break and I haven't even got started yet. I dare you to open your mouth and put it in the atmosphere. Say epic. If you don't say epic, the devil would think he won. Say epic. If you don't say epic, the devil would think he defeated you. Say epic. If you don't say epic, it may not come to pass. Say epic. Throw back your head. Let the demons in hell hear you say epic. Verse number three. I dare you to lean on somebody and say, this is the year, this is the year. (laughs) 
somebody came all the way from Louisiana to get this word and God gave me a word for you to tell you this is going to be an epic year for you he's about to turn it around your last part of this year is going to be better than your first shake a hand one more time and say you need to get ready for the last six months of the year because God is about to change some things for you God is about to turn some things around God is about to Look at what he said. Look at what he said. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. The day of, of vengeance for my God. For all of you that think that you've got to get back at your enemy for trying to destroy you, God told me to tell you, don't worry about your enemy. He said, I got your enemy. All the people that came against you, God said, you don't have to worry about them. God said, I'm going to get them for you. And the way I'm, I'm not going to destroy them, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make them watch me bless you. I'm not going to kill them. I'm not going to destroy them. I'm not going to let them have an accident. I reign on the just and the unjust. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make them sit in your presence and watch me bless you. Watch me. Y'all don't want to give God a praise right here. The Bible says, I will furnish a table in the presence of your enemy. I want somebody to throw back your head and give God a praise for all your enemies. For all the people that doubted you. For all the people that came against you. For all the people that criticized you. For all the people that tried to sabotage you. Open up your mouth. Throw back your head. Praise God for all your enemies. Verse number three. Verse number three. I know that's the first lady. Go at to God. But you got to understand, there were some women that tried to set her up to destroy her. Go at to God. But God told her that I'm about to restore everything that you lost. Verse number three. That's what I came to preach from. Verse number three. Verse number three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, that he might be glorified. Again, for reiteration, I'm going to derive a thought and I'm going to get out of your hair and I'm going to go on vacation and get black. I mean, I'm going to get black. When I get back, I want to be the color of these pants. If I got to put some Crisco on me, I'm going to get black. I know y'all don't know what Crisco is. That's, you cook chicken with it. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. I'm going to talk real quick from the subject, blessing by appointment. <laughs> See, demons in hell right now on edge. You know why? Because the indigenous of hell know that they can't stop what God is about to do because it's by appointment. It's already been assigned to you. <laughs> it's already on the docket. God has already made the decision to perform this act in your life. And what you should do, as opposed to walking around with your head hung down, you should give God an advanced praise. Uh, God, I'm not praising you right now for what you have done. 
I'm about to give you a praise for what you're about to do. <laughs> I'm getting happy for myself. I want somebody to give God a quick praise for what he's about to do. You thank God for all that he's done. You thank God for all he's performed. I want you to get radical enough from the front to the back to give God a quick praise for what he's about to do. Look at your neighbor and make eyeball to eyeball contact and say, neighbor, I'm about to give God a praise for what he's about to do. To appoint unto them, to appoint unto them, watch this, that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Now wait, wait, give me a minute to work the text. You can turn that down, it's echoing here. Uh, to, 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 yes, see the, the hollow sound? I don't know what was happening, it was fine, I, I thought it was. Uh, to give unto them beauty for ashes. When I look at this text, dear hearts, you can give it back something. Uh, man, I feel like doing the James Brown up here. I do. I feel like doing the, uh, the monkey, the twist. To give unto them beauty for ashes. You know, when I, when I looked at this, ladies and gentlemen, in the text, I was somewhat rend in my spirit, torn in my spirit, son, because I wish this would have said, I'm going to give you beauty for fire. But it said beauty for ashes. I was troubled by that. I was somewhat disappointed by that because if it would have said beauty for fire, this would have been a much easier text to preach. Because fire is symbolic of test or a trial or tribulation. I'm going to give you beauty for your test, for your, for your trial, for your tribulation. I'm going to give you beauty for all the hell that you've gone through. I'm going to give you beauty for it. This would have been a much more engaging text. I would have been able to delve into it and work it to the nth degree because everyone in the room, both young and old, has gone through some stuff. And when you, when, you, when you get a panoramic view of some of the things that God has allowed to transpire in your life, what God has allowed to happen, the vicissitudes of walking with God, and when you consider some of the things that God drew back on and allow certain things to come nigh you, to test you, to try you, to get on your last nerve. If God would have said, I'm going to give you beauty to compensate everything you went through, we could praise God beyond measure. And so when I saw the text, I thought, God, why didn't you say fire? Why didn't you say, I'm going to give you beauty for the fire? And so I was real, I was torn, I quandered with the text, I wrestled with the text. When I did an interrogation of the text, I was troubled by this until I began to look at the word ashes. Y'all pray for me because I'm about to lose my cotton picking mind. When I began to look at this word ashes, in my Hebrew honey, it is the residue left after the burning of a substance. He says, so I'm going to give you beauty, not for fire. I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. I'm going to give you beauty, not for what you went through, not for the test that came nigh you, not for the trial that caused you to almost pull your hair out, not for the test that put you at a point that you were ready to shoot somebody or cut somebody or stab somebody in the neck. I'm talking about, I'm talking about not the test that you almost lost it, you almost clocked out. He said, I'm going to give you beauty for your ashes. I'm going to give you beauty for what you got left. God said, I'm going to use what you got left now that the test is over. Okay, y'all missed that whole dissertation. I want you to tell somebody, say, God's about to bless what you got left. Whatever faith you got left, God said, I'm about to bless it. 
Whatever anointing you're walking in right now, I'm going to use that for my glory. Glory to God. I see the little girl. Denzel Washington said in the movie, Equalizer 2, he said, there are two kinds of pain in the world, the pain that hurts and the pain that alters. And he said, today you get to choose. And I'm choosing today to not allow my test to define my future. So I'm going to forget about everything that I went through. And I'm going to allow God to use what I got left to bring me to the place that he has so ordained. Oh, God have mercy. Maybe y'all tired too. I can't get no kind of amen up in this church. I dare you, if you got anything left, all that you've gone through, if you've got anything left, I dare you to give God a praise on what you got left. Hold up. He said, today, today, you get to choose. Now you can decide, either I'm going to continue to let the test hold me down, keep me captive, I'm going to continue to allow the test, the trial, to play and toy with my mind. Or I'm going to get up, shake away the ashes, and move into my place of blessing. All those people that's ready to get rid of your ashes, I dare you to get on your feet real quick. Now, the Bible said, I will take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I want the devil in hell to see you perform and do what you're about to do. I want you to give God a praise while you're shaking away ashes. See, some of y'all, you're too important. You're too prestigious. You're too all of that. But I dare you to give God a praise. Shake, shake it away. Shake off anything that may try to hinder you from moving into your blessed place. Shake it out of your mind. Shake it out of your heart. Shake it out of your spirit. Shake it, shake it loose. Shake it, yeah! God, I feel right preaching. And so he said, be seated for a minute. I got about 11, 12, I got about 21 minutes and I will be through. He said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. Watch this now. I'm just about there. I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. I'm going to give you the oil of joy for morning. I'm going to give you the oil of joy, a consistent flow of oil. I'm going to give you the oil of joy. Come here, Morris. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the oil of joy. I'm, I'm going to give you the oil of joy. Hurry, son, hurry. You're too young to be moving that slow. Uh, I'm sitting right there, son. He said, I'm going to give you the oil of joy. Face the audience. I'm going to give you the oil of joy. That this time, when Satan rush in on you, areas that he used to captivate your mind and get a hold on you, I'm going to all you down so that this time that, that, that this time when he tried to depress you when he, when he tried to, to bring you down when he tried to talk with you he ain't going to be able to get a grip on you because God is going to oh. Jared, I don't know who that's for but if you think I'm talking to you, I want you to get on your feet and say, devil, get your hands off me. Take your hands off of my mind. Take your hands off of my children. Take your hands off of my money. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you, can I go a step further? I'm gonna give you, who am I talking to? Who 
some, if I'm talking to you and you want God to awe you down, that certain things don't impact you the same way, I dare you to throw back your head and get radical and say, God, all of me down. Put your spirit on me that no demon in hell can. I dare you to open your mouth and say, God, all of me down. Let your Holy Spirit fall on me. If I'm talking to you, I double dog dare you to throw back your head and release a sound out of your mouth that will give God a praise that he will release his oil on you. Hallelujah. The oil of joy for morning. Will you do something for me and point your finger in somebody's face and say you won't cry over that another day. You would not be depressed over that another day. You would not be sad one more day. You will not, you will not be depressed one more day. Today is the last day you hold your head down. From this day forward, everywhere you go, you go lift up your head, O ye gate, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. For the King of Glory shall come in. Who is the King of Glory? I'm going to tell you who he is. He's the Lord strong and mighty. He's the Lord mighty in battle. Say yeah. Say yes, say yes, say I dare you to open your mouth and give God a praise for the oil. The oil of joy for morning and the garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness. Where can I talk about this? The garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness. Let me walk this a minute, George. The garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness. I know this is casual. I need a coat. Yeah, give me that coat. Oh, you the deacon. Come on. Yes, sir. Give me that coat. Yeah. This, that's the coat I needed right here. If, if I mess it up, just send it to the cleaners and, and send me the bill. I'm going to give it back to you. You can go back to your seat. I'm going to give it back to you. I ain't going to keep it. He's standing up here like, you know, I'm going to wait on my coat, preacher. I don't know you. I don't, I don't know you like that. Get my coat back. I'm too sharp to not have on my coat. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to give you the garment of praise. This is the right one. Smell good, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness hallelujah the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness because some of the people in this room Jesse, have been wrestling with not just being heavy but the spirit of heaviness because some things don't just come some things have a spirit attached to it you don't just play with your mind it carries a spirit that follows you. You go to work, the spirit go to work with you. You go to the gym, the spirit go to the gym with you. You go to the grocery store and the spirit is at the meat counter waiting on you. You go to check out and the spirit of heaviness, you wake up with it. Noonday, here it is again. Riding down the street and the spirit of it. You ain't got to say, oh yeah, I'm preaching, son. You ain't got to say, man, but I know it's up in here. It ain't all, all of us ain't dealing with the same spirit, but everybody up in here is dealing with some kind of spirit that's trying to wait you down. Trying to wait you down. Send me the bill because I'm going to lay down in your coat. Trying to try, the spirit of heaven. He said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the garment of praise that this time when it comes, 
You thought that I was gonna respond like I did respond like I responded last time, but you thought you were gonna oppress me, but y'all don't hear me. I want somebody to get real bold and just laugh at your enemies. No, ain't got all the money, but no, I just got part of the rent, but because the same God that gave me the front part. I know my car ain't working. I'm gonna get on this bus line. <laughs> I know I've been dealing with a little loneliness, but <laughs> somebody just laugh at him, laugh at him. I'm gonna give you the garment of praise. Ready? For the spirit of heaven. Take this coat. I feel like a Baptist preacher. <laughs> God me, old gray Jehovah. I don't know what. <laughs> hey, 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 you watch God bless me. You watch God heal me. I'm going to give you the garment, Deb, I feel it. For the spirit of heaviness, I feel like I got a hot flash. <laughs> Thank you, Deacon. Thank you. Send me the bill now. Send me the all right. Y'all sit down, sit down. The go garment of praise for the spirit. I'm just about there. I'm you still praying for me? Garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. And, and watch this. That ye may be called the trees of righteousness. That you may be called the trees, Eddie, of righteousness. That you will be an example to all your enemies of a vessel that I used that the devil tried to bend you but he couldn't break you. <laughs> Would you do something for me? Come here, I need, a, I, need a, I need a partner. I want you to grab a neighbor and say, neighbor, he tried to bend me but he couldn't break me. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about because you let him break you. But for all the people in this room that the devil tried to break you, the devil tried to destroy you, I want you to get on your feet, only those people. And I want you to get one neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, the devil tried to destroy me. The devil tried to kill me, but he could not break me. I still got a praise. I still got my joy. I still got my peace. I still got a praise. I still got a thank you. I still got a glory. I still got running in my feet. How dare you to high five three people and say, I still got it. I still got it. I need three, I need three, I need three. I need it. Hey, High five somebody else and say, I still got it. 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 Tell your neighbor, say, I still got it. Tried to kill me, but I still got it. Everybody that still got it, 
throw back your head and shout because you still got it. I'm going to, I'm just about there. I'm just about there. I'm closing. Boy, hallelujah to God. Would you look at somebody and say, the devil thought he was going to kill me. But I still got it. I still got it. Watch this. Everybody that still got it, I want you to give God a 10 second praise because you still got it. Whoa! Come here, Tim. This is the last time. After this, I'm through with you. I want you to say, neighbor, the devil wanted me dead, but I still got it. This is the while I give God a praise. My God, my God, my God. I'm close. I'm close. I'm close. Blessing by appointment. Here is the appointment. God said, now that you come past the test and reach this appointed place, he said, now I'm going to plant you for my glory. I'm going to plant you in an environment that's going to give me glory. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed a good place to give him praise. God said, I'm about to plant you in a place that's going to give me glory. I'm going to plant you in a place that everybody in that environment go acknowledge that I'm with you. I hear you, little girl. Hallelujah. If you think I'm talking about you, I want you to take a step in your new place and give God a shot right now. Give God a shot right now. Give God a shot right now. Give God. Ah! Step on. Don't be in party. Don't boy. You better, if you ain't never praised God, you better praise God now. Malcolm, Sorrell, get in the aisle. Y'all praise him because God said, I'm about to double the increase. My God, my God, my Kwame, find Odessa and point your finger. I say, baby, God is about to. Wait. Wait, I'm closing, little girl. This is for you. I want somebody in this room to give God a ridiculous praise for your new appointment. Yeah. Ah! Keith, I dare you to praise him for your new appointment. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. Why are you praising him for you? Praise him for Donald, too. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you, Glory. I see you, Mother. I see you. I see you, Gina. I see you. I see you. I see you, Elder. I see you, Fred. I want you one more time. Give God a praise for your new apartment. Lift your hand. Yes, you need to forget about everything around you and give God a praise because by the end of the year, God is going to put you in a new position, a position of authority. And he's going to double everything you were expecting. My God, my God, my God. Ah!
Deb, lift your hands to God. God said, you need to alter your expectancy. You are expecting God to come in and sustain your house in a certain door. God said, that door was closed so I can open the door. You need to give God a crazy praise for the new door that he's about to open for you that's gonna sustain your house. My God, have, no girl, no girl, no, 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 no. Forget about everybody back there. You better get, I want somebody to give God a praise like I'm talking about you, like I'm talking. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Lift your hands to God. Lift your hands to God. No. Yes. Lift your hands to God. You had conceded that this door was not going to be. You had written it off and decided it's just not to be. God said, I didn't close the door. I didn't close the door. He said, I'm just going to choose somebody else to open it for you. Girl, you better, you better give him a praise right now. You better, you, you better give him a praise right now. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to use somebody else to open the door that you thought was closed. Lift your hands up. You have almost cried, painting. And the reason was you wanted to give more than you were able to give. God said, I'm about to bless your house that you go be able to give, and it will never hurt you to give again. Y'all don't, y'all don't want to praise him. Y'all don't believe God. Y'all, y'all, you know, I heard a preacher say one time, he said, when you hear a prophecy, he said, don't get mad. He said, reach out and grab it for yourself. Because just because God said it for one person, don't mean he can't do it. Somebody reach out and grab it and praise God for your house. Praise him, praise him. My time is up. I got one minute. I got one minute. It's 12 09. I'm supposed to be finished by 12 10. But I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say that if you praise me for the next few seconds, He said, by the end of the nine seconds, Somebody in this room. Sir, you, yes, yes, lift your hand to God. God said, you made the mistake, but I'm wiping a slate clean. And I'm starting you over. 
and what it looked like was going to hinder. You get into where I had designed. God said, I'm wiping the slate clean. And I'm going to bless you like it never happened. Somebody in this room. I know my time is up, Deacon. But I want somebody in this room for the last time. For the last time. Don't do it cute. Don't do it cute. I want you to give God a ridiculous praise one more time. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Now. Do it now. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell A ridiculous praise. A, I, I said a ridiculous praise. mistake. When Paul and Silas was locked in jail, God required them to give them a ridiculous praise because it's ridiculous to give praise to God and you're locked up. It makes sense to give him praise when he sets you free. So he said, give me a praise while you're still locked up. What they didn't know is that the praise was about to open the door. And some of you didn't praise him. But for all of us that did, God said, your praise just opened that door. My God, my God, my God, my God, your praise just opened that door. Come on, that praise will open that door. Trishel, praise him for God opening that door, not a door, that door. stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody. Hallelujah. Give God one more praise for opening that door. Lift your hands and with the fruit of your lips worship him. 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 Go over to God. Go over to God. Go over to God. Worship him. Open your mouth with the food of your lips. Come on, come on. Come on, come with the food of the lips. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth.
Come on, with the fruit of your lips. Come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. I really love you, Lord. Really love you, Lord. Come on, lift your butt, lift your hands. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Choir, help pastor. Say, oh. Every hand lifted. Come on, let's create an atmosphere. Nobody. Y'all help me say there's no more. Oh. Nobody like you. Come on. There's nobody. Every voice, every spirit say, oh, oh. I really need you. Come on. This time, let's put it in the atmosphere. Come on, let's make the angels in heaven jealous because the redeemed of the Lord. I really need you. <laughs> One more time. Everything that have breath say, oh. Come on, come on. This time, I want everybody to say, oh. I really love you, Jesus. Can't make it without you. Now as we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, the man of God has released his garment to bring forth your word. Bless everything he put his hands to. Go run unto him the prophet's reward. Hallelujah. We're going home. Lift those hands, front and back. Lift those hands, gentlemen. Lift your hands, gentlemen. Both hands. Lift them high. When we lift our hands high before our God, it's a sign of surrender once. We're saying to God, God, whatever you desire to do in my life, I surrender to you. <laughs> lift them high. Only if you're surrendering all to God, lift them high. If you have surrender and bring them down. If you, if you want God to take full control of your life, lift them high. Stretch them high. Stretch them high. Take charge, God. Use our lives. Plant us as trees of righteousness. you may be glorified spirit of the living God in this place today stands the trees of righteousness we accept We're blessed by, we're honored that this day you have decreed unto us. Everyone stand, please. Everyone stand. Everyone stand. 
give respect to what's taking place. Yes. You mean to tell me you don't receive this segment of the lesson? God said he's going to plant us, Kimberly. As trees of righteousness for his glory. That he's about to plant us in a place that's going to give him glory. And you can't, oh, lift him high, stretch him, stretch him, stretch him, stretch him. Both of them, stretch. Now if you don't want it, you can set back down. If you don't desire it, you can set back down. If you don't need it, set back down. You got everything you need. You're fine and dandy. But there are some of us up in here, Sonny, who need God to plant us in the place that he has so ordained for us. God, every hand that's lifted, I stand in the gap and I make up the hedge. And I stand before you and I cry unto thee. I beseech you by your mercies that this day began the moment of change. That you take us out of the doldrums of the test, of the trial, of the tribulation and plant us in the place of blessing that it will glorify you. Clap those hands, all ye people. Clap those hands, all ye people.